This is the Mistress Carrie Situation Report for July 30th, 2024. Your daily music headlines, industry info, and everything rock. Drummer Nick Mason has a plan for potentially sidestepping the long-standing feud between David Gilmour and Roger Waters to record new Pink Floyd music, and it involves AI. In a recent interview with the Daily Mirror, he admitted there's no chance of a reunion between the surviving members of the band, but expressed an interest in using AI for a what-if scenario. He said it would be fascinating to see what AI could do with new music. If you tried to run it, it was sort of where did Pink Floyd go after? The thing would have to be an AI situation where David and Roger become friends again. We could be like ABBA by the time we finished with it. There's at least a small chance that David Gilmour would be open to such a scenario. Earlier this year, he said he would, quote, consider doing a Pink Floyd hologram show under, quote, very, very difficult and onerous conditions. Joe Bonamassa is imploring the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame to reckon with its many eligible artists of advanced age, saying that the institution, quote, cannot wait for them all to die before inducting them. Making his point during a recent Artists on Record episode, reflecting on the death of pioneer British blues guitarist John Mayall at the age of 90. Mayall, whose 1966 album Blues Breakers with Eric Clapton became a blues rock cornerstone, will posthumously enter the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year as a recipient of the Musical Excellence Award. Saying, quote, I'm glad he was aware that he was going into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm sad and slightly pissed off that he didn't live to see it because he deserved to go in decades ago. Lollapalooza is excited to announce that this year's main stage is sponsored by T-Mobile and will be powered solely and completely on a hybrid battery system, including all audio, lighting, video, and stage production. In a partnership with Live Nation's sustainability initiative, Green Nation, T-Mobile, and CES Power, Lollapalooza will make history as the first major U.S. festival to achieve this, furthering its commitment to its ever-expanding sustainability efforts. Jack White and Conan O'Brien served as the final guests at Sunday evening's Newport Folk Festival lineup, joining forces for a duet of the White Stripes' We're Going to Be Friends. Jack White sang, We're going to do a song about friendship before they began the song, which was released on the White Stripes' 2001 album, White Blood Cells. It was the last song ever performed on O'Brien's NBC Late Night Show, and the comedian also uses it for his podcast, Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend. The pair also performed Eddie Cochran's 20 Flight Rock. The night before, Jack White played a small, intimate gathering at the American Legion in Nashville, Tennessee, as a fundraiser to buy a new PA system for the Legion. He recently announced a new album, debuting a number of songs from his new album, No Name, at the show. He opened with four of the new songs, including Old Scratch Blues, Archbishop Harold Holmes, That's How I'm Feeling, and What's the Rumpus. A street in Chicago has been renamed in honor of the late Steve Albini. Yesterday, Touch and Go Records shared an official letter of ordinance by the City Council of Chicago confirming that honorary street name signs are being installed along the 2600 and 2700 block of West Belmont Avenue to rename it Steve Albini Way. The stretch was carefully selected, seeing as the late Albini's iconic electric audio studio sits in that stretch of buildings. The producer and engineer tragically passed away on May 7th of this year from a heart attack. He played in plenty of bands signed to Touch and Go Records, including Big Black, who signed with the label in late 1985. Albini was the mastermind behind iconic albums like Nirvana's In Utero and Manic Street Preacher's Journal for Plague Lovers. Britney Spears has now deleted a comment online kindly telling the Osborne family to F off. In a new video promoting the latest episode of the Osborne's podcast, Kelly Osborne asks if the family owes Britney Spears an apology before the original offending comments are replayed. 
Kelly and Jack appear sincere in their wish to quell the beef, but Ozzy said, quote, Brittany, I really owe you an apology. I'm so sorry for making that comment. However, it would be better if you didn't do the same fucking dance every day. Change a few movements. I love Britney Spears, but it's the same dance every day, he said. Joseph Duplantier of Gojira has defended his band against accusations that they were perpetrating Satanism with their performance at Friday night's Olympic Games opening ceremony. They performed a surprise rendition of Ah Saira, a popular song during the French Revolution, alongside opera singer Marina Viotti. Duplantier saying it's none of that. It's French history. It's French charm, you know, beheading people, red wine and blood all over the place. It's romantic. It's normal. There's nothing satanic. France is a country that made a separation between the state and religion during the revolution, and it's something very important and very dear to the foundation of Republican France. We call it la cite. It's when the state is not religious anymore, so therefore it's free in terms of expression and symbolism. It's all about history and facts. We don't look too closely at symbolism in terms of religion, he said. He also commented on the responsibility of representing metal on a world stage, saying, quote, I try not to think too much about that because it continues to blow my mind. The Olympic Committee could have asked literally anybody to play. I'm thinking bands like Metallica or ACDC that are household names and powerhouses in our genre that we all revere and are our heroes. We never considered ourselves the biggest band in the world that would be worthy to play the Olympics or anything like that. It's so weird. Gojira are heading out on the road later this year with Korn with a stop September 21st in Mansfield, Massachusetts at the Xfinity Center. The celebrity edition of Family Feud featuring Papa Roach and Daughtry is set to air on ABC and stream on Hulu today. Money won on Celebrity Family Feud will be donated to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Angus Young from ACDC is getting not one, but two new Funko Pop figures. Both will feature Young in his trademark schoolboy outfit and cap. One will feature Angus in a red suit and blue cap, including a stage with the ACDC logo. The other has him in a green outfit without the stage. Both are available at Funko.com with a release date on Amazon of November 18th. And that's your sit rep. For more details on all of the stories, check the links in the show notes of this episode. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the Mistress Carrie podcast. New full-length episodes come out every Wednesday. Episode 216 featuring Josh and Alex from Bad Flower is available now.